Where you from, sir? I'm from Cobb County, Georgia. It's like um, 20, 30 minutes out uh, from Atlanta. Okay, what's it like over there? Mm, it was cool. Um, <laughs> regular stuff was going on, you know what I'm saying? Not too much. Did you spend a lot of time in Atlanta when you were growing up? No, no, no. How about now? I think you're 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 located over there now, right? Now, yeah. I, um, I'm in not Atlanta, yeah. So for those who those who aren't familiar with Atlanta, what what would you tell them? As far as coming there, or yeah, just uh, visiting or the overall you know vibe because the religion obviously is growing quite a bit over there. Yeah. So. Mm. I'm not sure you got to be yourself when you come to Atlanta. You yeah. can't be like everyone else. Um, as, as far as following E5 and this trend, um. I say go with your gut, or you know what I'm saying, go with what you feel. You know what I'm saying, go with a person or a uh, ele that you feel is suitable for you. Because in Atlanta, a lot of people just oh hey, I do ifa so come over here with me, or hey this or whatever. You know what I'm saying, and a lot of people get stuck, <clears throat> stuck in something they can't get themselves out of, or it's gonna take a long time for them to get, to get, get out of. You know what I'm saying? Then we ifa. How long ago did you hear about the religion? I want to say seven years ago, eight years ago. Has there been a drastic change from when you got in? Definitely. Definitely. For the better or for the worse? For the better. Yeah? Yeah, life changed completely, the whole 360. So what was the first time you heard about it? What was that experience like? Um, I was younger. This is around like 2018. Um, My cousin came to me. He, he actually Muslim. He's nice. like, I heard of a, um, a culture... Or uh, slash religion called Ifa, and he was he was telling me stories like um because he was incarcerated, and he said um it was a guy who was locked up with him, that he got a reading from his Babalao, and they told him not to do certain things, um and he was on the way to go do something illegal, and before he got on the bus to go do the thing, uh he said he seen a strike of lightning or he seen something that threw him off, but he still went to go do what he needed what, what he was going to go do, and he got locked up after. So I was like, wow, that sounds crazy. So I started doing my research on E5. And then um, I found myself incarcerated at the time. Uh, I ran into another Muslim guy. And he started telling me about E5, talking to me about E5. Then he started talking to me about a certain Arisha, Arisha that was over the jail. And he was telling me about uh, he had the bow and arrow and stuff like that. Ended up being Ochoci. Wow. He started telling me the story about how Ochoci got, um, how he did the bow and arrow with his mother mm -hmm. Because of the chick, um, the rooster or whatever the situation, the pataki, um, and then yeah, when I got out of jail, I got a reading, and I just move, I just move a little fast with that. How much time did you do? Like five months, no. How much time? Nine, yeah, nine, two, uh, I mean, five months is five months, but I mean, I mean, girl. yeah, time is time. Yeah, but, you know, nothing heavy. Yeah, nothing crazy. So when you get out of uh, you get out of jail at that point, do you go and get a reading yourself? Yeah. All right. What was I that would, experience like? Um. I was kind of nervous because I didn't know I never did nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? But I always had my mind open for everything. I never sat down and was like, um, I'm a Christian, I'm Muslim, or anything like that. But if I, it, it pulled me when I started looking it up because it's something new. I never I never thought about anything like this. You know what I'm saying? So um, I actually got a reader for my lady. She did it with the Kyrie shells. Nice. Um, she was telling me different things, little stuff. And I was like, wow, this is this, that's crazy. Uh, then I eventually met her godson, and he was the Babalao. Or he was becoming a Babalao. Mm. That's when he was teaching us stuff and uh, showing us the equile and things like that. And I it just put every day I just wanted to have something to do with Ifa or talk about Ifa. You know what I'm saying? My life really just became Ifa after that moment. So after these experiences, at what point are you like, I think I'm going to get my hand to Ifa? What was that experience like? Mm, the first reading, she told me about a hand. She talked to me about a hand of Ifa. I did my research on the internet. At, at that time, I couldn't find too many things about Hannah Bifa, uh, or it was coming up as Mano de Arula in Spanish. Mm. Um, so then I asked her godson about it, and I, you know, I started talking to different people, and they were like, I don't know about Hannah Bifa. A lot of people in Atlanta don't have their Hannah Bifa. They just get the readings and uh, 
walk around with it. Either any leke on. Oh, so they got the bracelet pretty much, but yeah, they haven't gone through the full process. Yeah, yeah. That's basically what's going on right now. Why do you think that's occurring? Because a lot of people aren't talking about hand of Ifa or talking about growing any Ifa. People are thinking they're growing any Ifa, but they're really just in the same position. I'm not saying that they have to move fast, you know, everybody move at their own pace, but um, it's people like me or other Babalaos, Creole Babalaos, who, you know what I'm saying, not promote, but promote the hand of Ifa so that you can find out who you are, who you truly are, you know what I'm saying? Um, but. Was Ochoci on your radar? That's what was. Like, did you think, I mean, up until that point you had heard about Ochoci when you were inside, when you actually go for your hand of Ifa, did you think you were going to be a child of Ochoci? Nah, not at all. And what's, what's so crazy is, um, so that was around like 2018, I received my hand of Ifa, January 2020. The day before Ita. I had a dream about a guy in the woods with a bow and arrow. Wow. Um, and it was so crazy. And I have a lot of dreams like that, you know what I'm saying, up until now. Like, I see stuff before it happened, or I, you know, I might get a feeling about something, and it just jumps at me. But um, with Ochoci, I yeah, he caught me by surprise. You guys don't come out a lot. You know, yeah. it's not really identified. It's and I tell you, what I've noticed in my trajectory is really fabulous. Baolao is actually one of my mentors and one of my teachers. Um, my uncle, Babarito Irete Obara, um, son of Ochoci, mm-hmm. brilliant Baolao. What I've noticed is that's kind of the theme, you know, when there's training and, and real um, investment. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you guys really do excel. You know, when it was identified, how did you feel? You know, did it make sense to you at that point? It made sense a couple months in. After my hand of Eva, after uh, reading my old duel and just thinking about my life and then seeing how it was going, I'm like, yeah, I'm on my own choice. Now, we, we haven't gone over this. Are you crowned or did you, did you watch? No, I watched. Beautiful. Yeah, that's in the old duel, Salah Fobeo, the majority of Warrior Brothers. You know, that's my mano de ruler. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, then there you go, brother. I didn't know that. Yeah, so, you know, Salah Fobeo was where, you know, Badala kicked you guys out of the room because you were loyal, you were loyal to Orumila. And uh, he said, well, if you're going to kick them out, I'll take them with me direct, you know. So to all those brothers out there that are warriors, it's a perfectly legitimate path to follow. So at what point are you like, man, I want to be a Bawalao? I always found myself being a leader. You know what I'm saying? I always was around a lot of older people. Yeah. And then um, – Getting to my like my twenties, my early twenties, I had young people and older people around me, and I just see that they uh, listen to what I got to say, or I might have a mind that they, they might call me for advice, you know what I'm saying? So it was around what 2021. I was with my padrino actually out here in Orlando. Um, he was talking to me and my god brother, my mate that I did Ifa with. Nice. Um, he was telling me he's about to do Ifa, and like I think you should do it. So I sat back, um, had a conversation with one of my little brothers, and he was like, I think you should do it, you know what I'm saying, just for you. And I just went in. I just went and did it, and it's a whole different experience than I thought. Yeah, I tell you when. Um, experience at that. Oh, yeah, yeah, but you can see it's definitely for gentlemen. Yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying? You got to. You gotta for men. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, to each his own. There's a lot of things we're seeing now with, you know, alternative clans and lineages and how they do things. I actually just uh, initiated my godson, Ronnie Otruponsa, about two, three weeks ago. Okay. And, um, you know, and when he came out of the ceremony, you know, everybody's eyes are, like, wide open. Like, yeah. you're like, what you've just been through. And um, he's like, but, you know, I would have never imagined. And that's the idea, you know. But um, you, we were talking a little bit before um, we got on camera about your Odu. Mm-hmm. Big fan of it, I like I mentioned. And, yeah. uh you know, when you start reading your sign, like Oturache, what are the things that are impacting you the most about it? Because I remember when I read Ideta Suka for the first time, I got very emotional because, you know, when you go into the room, you're looking for answers. Yeah. You really want those confirmations, like, why has my life been like this? Or why did that happen to me? Or why didn't I do that? Or, you know, what were some of the things you noticed in your Odu that really applied to you? Um, the diabetes. Really? I have diabetes, yeah. I got diabetes in fifth grade. Wow. Um, How'd that happen? I'm, I, I'm not sure. I don't know if it passed down through, like, you know what I'm saying, my genes or anything like that. A lot of people on my mother's side have diabetes. Oh. Um, yeah, that was a shocking surprise. Oh. I just thought I was sick. Yeah. And they came in with news saying I had diabetes. Uh, that stuck out to me. 
um, the cross of my legs, like um, like the Chinese people they say. Wow. Uh, falling asleep everywhere I go, I wow. noticed that a lot. Yeah, with the Buddha when he fell asleep under the tree. Yeah, yeah, it's I wild. noticed that a lot. Um, the fingernail thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I used to bite my nails a lot. Yeah. I, my life was okay as a as a kid, you know. No, I can't complain. Yeah. Both parents, you know what I'm saying. Um, but I don't know. I notice when I bite my nails. It wasn't too much good going on. I think they would leave. Yeah. And I had got a job, my first job ever. And I was working so much, I didn't notice to bite my nails. My nails were growing. Yeah. Money flowing in, life yeah. getting better, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, life's getting a little easier. I noticed that then. But then when I read it, no through that chair, like, why that make a lot of sense? That's that's wild you mentioned that. I remember when I went to Dewey Farm, and my grandfather, Kataiobe for the first time and one of the things i noticed is he had these beautiful hands right like he had a you know he's old school cuban he had a he had a gold ring on every yeah, finger yeah, you know yeah. what i'm saying but i noticed his nails were so long i said this guy will cut somebody and you know i didn't dare ask him but my godfather noticed i was noticing and he brought up the conversation with kata and kata he said uh the true sign of our is is long nails and your old dude actually came up in conversation all the old school Bawalaos, they used to have these nice beautiful long nails you know what I'm you know what I'm saying? And um, it was a sign of you don't work. You know what I'm saying? All you do is throw the chain all day. So it was like old school, you know, like, ah, my nails are longer than yours. Um, but um, it, it is ironic because all of that is there. Now, spiritually, how did you start off in life? Like, was your family Christian? Were they Muslim? Something else? Um, my mother tried to bring us up in the church. Um, she wasn't Christian or nothing. Mm -hmm. Just go to church, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Something regular. But um, around this time, I got diabetes. I just, something didn't feel right in the church, in that church, I'm going to say. Um, the pastor one time told my mother that uh, I need to stop taking my medicine. That, oh Lord. You know, God got me, but, you know, that's that's crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, growing up, my brothers tried um, getting into Israelites and learning about stuff like that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? At this time, I'm still kind of young, growing up middle school. Yeah. High school, I'm not really too much worried about a religion or sure. anything like that. Um, but then when I got into Ifa, they didn't, nobody shamed, nobody in my family shamed me, nobody looked at me different. Really? They actually seen a change in me from when I would see him. I know they were ruler, then when I did Ifa. That's rare. Yeah. Especially coming up, I mean, even though you guys weren't uber Christian or anything like that, it sounded more non denominational. That's actually, that acceptance is pretty rare because, you know, most of people in our community, Spanish or black, like when you come up in the church or anything and you kind of stray away, the first thing you usually get hit with is fear. Yeah, so that, that's 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 really you know, shout out to mom. Yeah. What would she uh you know when she's noticing all these things in you, what did she say? What were the conversations you guys were having? Like, hey mom, I'm a whole priest now. When I did five, um, I had them come from Atlanta to Temple. I did five Temple. Nice. Um, my father came. My mother came. Some of my brothers. Some oh. of my brothers from the streets and outside came. Yeah, sure. They didn't know, like the yoyet. yet. <laughs> yeah, they're saying you get beat down. They're like, "What's going on?" They had no clue. Yeah, you know, I didn't really have a clue, but yeah, you know what I'm saying they didn't. They didn't know. So my father was looking like this kind of interesting. Like not not that they doing this to my son, but like this kind of interesting. Yeah. Um. So I, when I came back to Atlanta, slowly but surely, they just start saying like, "I see the better." Like you just you just overall getting better, or yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? You you care about life more. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people doing other this, that, and the third, and you're not into that or not around that anymore. Yeah. Um, um, then it took for my brother. He started coming to get um, readings and stuff like that to my padrino. Um, he started believing. Or not, not necessarily believing, just understanding it. And, like, that makes sense. Oh, that make a lot of sense. Oh, this, that, that make a lot of sense. Then my sister got into it. Then next thing you know, my whole family got their mind on their ruler. Wow. Yeah. That's 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 pretty much your Odu. I mean, when you look at Oturache, it kind of speaks of the person who kind of brought the religion yeah. to the masses to a certain degree because, you know, Rumila there was on a pilgrimage. He was walking a, a global path. You know, he interacted with the Buddha. He interacted with a bunch of people, really spread Ifa. Where ultimately, that Odu says you're going to be somebody that is going to be a beacon, mm -hmm. someone that's going to be an example. Now, you now seeing these changes within yourself, you know, what obligation do you feel, not only to your family, but now that they're kind of squared away to a certain degree, the community at large, 
you know, what, what obligation do you feel like you have to your demographic as far as knowledge and just, you know, being present for them? I feel like I'm at all times I'm obligated to teach and to help. Uh, I push that a lot each and every day. Um, with strangers contacting me on Instagram to my brothers calling my phone to whoever, you know what I'm saying? I'm pushing Ifa or a better life on everyone. Because yeah. without a better life, we just stuck. with Everybody just would be stuck, you know? If I show you how to move around, how to learn and live life. People say that they live life, but they, they I don't think they really live in life. Yeah, a lot of people breathing, not yeah, a lot of people living. Exactly. Yeah, and I, I would agree, man. I mean, you know, it's it's a scary idea to go through a whole lifetime being in the Matrix. You know, not, not knowing who you are, not knowing what you're really here to do. We all have things in common, but some of us have really specific missions. Exactly. You know, so it's, it's, it's really ideal that now someone such as yourself is in a place like Atlanta that's going through a renaissance period, man. I tell you, I look at it every day and I see it every day. I was just speaking about it with your godsons as well, just the explosion mm -hmm. um, that's happening over there. Um, you have a son. Yeah. yeah. And um, how, how gratifying is it to be able to give him this so young? You know, and, and help guide him not only as a Baba but as his father. I'm trying to see how I can explain that. Yeah, it's big, man. It's big. <clears throat> I feel like this is a perfect time at this age, five, oh, yeah. six, um, to teach him how to be a good person. Or to actually grow up with something and, you know, take it far in life and use actually use it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I made sure I stood on top of him getting his, his mono day ruler and the V5 so we know what to expect or know what he what he might go through, what challenges, what you know what I'm saying, what we have to stop put a stop to now so that it won't be bad or get worse, you know, later on in life. Um but yeah, um, yeah. That's a beautiful thing, man. I remember when I uh, had the pleasure of, you know, kind of coordinating my, my daughter's hand to be fine. It's um, it's the most beautiful thing because I remember my Yubona told me something, um, how much I said, you know, Padrino, what does Ifa mean to you? He said, Ifa means so much to, to me that I gave him the most precious thing I have, which was my son. Mm. And at that point, it kind of puts it into perspective where you have so much faith in a system. And then Orula. You know, who's a father to us all, you know, whether it be us brother Bawa Laos or everybody with their hand of Ifa, that, you know, I entrust him with my children. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's the most humbling thing. You know, what, um, even though it seems like Lukumi was the first one you were exposed to, what kind of motivated you to stay there rather than going to Isheshe? Okay, so I, I, when I got the reading with the Kari shares, sure. um, she's, I guess, under the Shea Shea car. Oh, okay. So that was actually the first yeah, experience was yeah. with them. Okay. Um, it wasn't no bad experience or nothing like that. I just, I don't know, gravitated to the Creole side of you, Ifa. And how have you been received? I mean, how has the experience been? Because, you know, a lot of brothers are like, you know, I, I want to go over there, but the language, but, you know, I'd be accepted. It's you know? great. I love it. Yeah. You know, um, I'm learning two languages, two different languages at yeah. one time. Yeah, you know Cuban saying? and Eng Cuban and, and Yoruba. Because yeah. Spanish is it's not Cuban. Cuban isn't Spanish. You know it's yeah. a whole different language. So I love it though. I, I don't know. I never got no bad feeling about it. Nobody rubbed me wrong. You know, yeah. comfortable where I'm at. You know, and I lo I love it. Beautiful. Yeah, it's like I mean, you know, I've had the pleasure like my godson Eric, my godson Ronnie. Um, it's been the most humbling experience being able to you know bring people back. Yeah. You know, and expose them to their roots, you know, exactly. to where they're from and understand that you have options, you know what I'm saying, and that you're going to be treated well on uh, on both sides. Um, you know, you now, is, I think you said you had two years? Uh, three years. Three years, nice. Like going on three years. This year. Going on three. What are some of the goals you have? What are, what are the experiences or possibly even the challenges you're experiencing as, you know, within initiatory age being a young Bawalao? I got, I got so many goals. Like, I say, mastering all elbows. Nice. You know, that's like on my top three. Yeah. Mastering um, 
um, El Bocatero, El, uh, El Boca, Payeru, yeah. even with these Che Che El I yeah. want to learn all of that. And, so through that Che, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, without you, there is no El Boca. Che, bro, yeah. You know? Um, after that, just get my people together. Yeah. You know? Really, that's, I say that's the top two for real. Honestly, just getting all my people and everybody together. Organization is going to be a big thing, you know, being able to get enough like-minded brothers together to be able to work towards that goal. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of us, but not all of us are, how do I say this? We're all here, but we're not all present. Exactly. I think it's the best way to put it. You know, it's like any fraternity, whether it's the Masons, whether it's the Paleros, whether it's us to a certain degree, you have a little bit of everything. You know, every brother comes with a different story and being able to find your, you know, organization within that is always a really glorious moment. Um, what advice would you give to people, especially in Atlanta where you are, um, that are thinking about the religion? You know, you can't really go on TikTok now without at least finding one slide about this faith, especially with all these, you know, musicians and, you know, celebrities and things that are in it. You know, what advice would you give to them um, seeing that random TikTok slide and being like, wow, that's interesting? What would you tell them? Do your research. Do research first before... Um just jumping into it. Like I said, like, you know what I'm saying? You got your Cheche, you got Creole, you look with me. Um, one one or the other might not fit you, or, you know, you might not like how they work or how they do over here. See, like in Atlanta, um, a lot of the black community look at me and ask me, why do I do E5 with Cubans? Sure. But I'm like, I'm not doing E5 with Cubans. I'm doing E5. There you go. E5 is E5, whether it's with Africans, Americans, Brazilians, whoever. E5 is E5. I got gravitated to Criollo by the grace of the egg wound or the spirit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I don't know why, but it fit It, it fit me. You know? I, I, I Shout out to these Shea Shea people. Yeah, the brother's the same, yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's the same It's the same thing, but it's a lot of controversy like in, in Atlanta about that. Yeah, that's really, you know, and I that's that's wild that you say that that that's actually where you got the pushback from. Yeah. Um where do you think that comes from? I'm not sure. Yeah. I, have, I don't know. I'm not sure. Yeah. No, it's just, you know, it's 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 noticeable where, you know, and and I think it comes from as well, you know, when you look at the history of the criollo ifa, especially here, you know, the language I think has a huge input as to who ends up here and who doesn't if you're lucky enough to be able to actually communicate yeah, 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 yeah. with your elders i think if more people understood what we were doing i think they'd be able to you know gravitate as well um ultimately you're going to end up where i think you're meant to be but I, I think the most important thing and i'm sure you've realized this being a part of it now is that we're not missing anything yeah either. not at all i mean when you actually because you know there's a lot of propaganda and there's a lot of conversations well cuban you know the language the this the that but mind you we, we suffered the slave trade Exactly. We, we went through a lot of pain. We lost a lot of ourselves. But to still have a system that's completely fully functioning is really incredible. Yeah. Because you know, like yourself, like myself, I've had many opportunities. I've interacted with a lot of really great people over there that are like, hey, Joe, whenever you're ready, you can come over. Yeah. And, you know, I appreciate the invite, you know what I'm saying? But at the same time, I really don't have the motivation to necessarily switch systems because I really don't see us missing anything. Yeah. And the more, the more I interact and delve into our practice, um, you know, it just further and further confirms that what we're doing is real. Because you look at yes. the change and, and you look at the change that some of us go through as men and it's like there has to be something happening there legitimate because if not, we wouldn't see no results. Yeah. Now, going back to Ochozi, um, what common denominators do you see between him and you? Because you mentioned you have a good relationship with mom. She was supportive with your process. You know, yeah. dad's there. Really opposite kind of what's popularly seen with Ochoci. What 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 characteristics do you find resonating most with your guardian, Orisha? Well, the relationship with my mother wasn't, um, on my end, it wasn't always good. Yeah. I actually felt like Ochoci. When I, when I found out about Ochoci, I thought about it like, I used to treat my mother a certain way, or you know what I'm saying, or I treat anyone a certain way. Um, like, where'd that come from? I'm not sure. Like, she used to make me want to come, like, come in the house early. I couldn't hang out with the kids, and it's like I had to build up frustration like that. And so I kind of like, you know, I didn't act on it, but 
I took it out on my mother. And but growing up, you know, after E five, I got a better relationship with her and stuff like that. Um, what about Chelsea? I feel like Chelsea was a a young, smart Arisha. I, I don't know for some reason I feel like he was one of the younger Arishas. Yeah, he was. And he was bright. Definitely. And I could see that self. I could see that with myself. You know what I'm saying? I was young, hanging out with a lot of older people, so I seen a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? That made me think like, oh, I don't want to be like that, or I want to be like that. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like me and Ochoa is definitely a like. If you were able to be face to face to him, what words would you have for him? Mm. I love you, and I thank you. Yeah, yeah, because he definitely guided me through a lot of things and put me through situations where I, I definitely learned. Instead of lollygagging and sitting around and playing, I actually learned from the situation and made my and became smarter and things like that. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely tell him I thank you and I love you. Being able to be, you know, well, you having, even though it wasn't a huge amount of time, even though you, you were incarcerated and now you're in this position where you've been able to grow, you know, how important is it for you to be a mentor now to young men? Um, obviously, apart from your son, but for example, God's sons, you know, people that see you online, people that, you know, can recognize in you something that they can relate to. How important is it for you to be present there so that they avoid the same things that you avoided by seeing some of the older guys, you know, make mistakes? It's very important. And I, like I said, I push that on my people every day, my brothers, sisters, whoever, God, sons, God, daughters, whoever. Even my godfather, I, you know what I'm saying? I just, um, I just feel like I need to be there and helping me. It's all about help with me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I'd rather, I rather always tell my people, I like to see y'all do better than me. I feel like that's the goal. It's a rare trait. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, yeah, I, could, I know this knowledge. I know this, that, and the third. But I feel like you should be better than me. And I, I want to help you be better than me. I don't want to see you go through the same stuff that you've been always going through. And I watched you go through this. I got the change. You know what I'm saying? I got the answer. Let's, let's you know what I'm saying? Let's do E5. Let me show you E5. Yeah. You know? So it's very important. I always think about that, you know, unfortunately, you run into a lot of people, some of them get locked up, and you really wonder, like, if that brother, that sister would have had the opportunity to interact with this philosophy first, exactly. or have that exposure first, we might have had a great Bawalao, we might have had a wonderful Santera, we might have had cool. just these wonderful professionals. I think when you're from a certain situation, and all you see is certain people doing certain things, it just, you kind of feel like, that's what I'm aspiring to. Yeah. You know, that's all I'm going to be able to be. You know, um, you being locked up, what were some of the things that you noticed could be better to be actually able to help people reform? You know, like, because a lot of people go in and to be frank with you, some of them just get better at what they were doing before. Yeah. You know, so what are some of the things you noticed that are a real handicap towards people inside that if we changed it, we might be able to have a, you know, a real effect that's not there? More books. Inside of the jail, less time of playing. It's more like it's, it's, it's more. It's a lot of playing. You know what I'm saying? As far as the inmates and guards and stuff like that, it's no, but it's no, nobody's leading in there. Everybody's just doing what they want. It's like a bunch of grown kids. Wow. You know, you, know? Um, you have some people like myself, like um, when I did the five months. I got into um, the law library. I started learning about, you know, what I was charged with and how could I defend myself. Yeah, I had a lawyer or whatever, but I was learning how to defend myself. Or I was learning about different charges, you know what I'm saying, after I, after I got my situation out of the way, you know what I'm saying? Like, we, we need people like that, that come inside the jail that I don't want to be in jail. This is not where I want to be at. So I'm going to take the situation, I'm going to learn the law, I'm going to help myself, and I'm going to help everybody else. You know, but yeah, that's what they're lacking. That is that is a crazy dynamic, especially you being a son of Ochoci, having gone through that process, you know. Because everybody, you know, a lot of people might have Ochoci misconstrued because usually people go to Ochoci when they're jammed up already. Yeah. And they're like, I want to get out of it. Yeah. Rather than what you did, which was, you know, hey, how do I, already being in this, kind of get out of it now? Exactly. You know, through my own efforts and through my own sacrifice. Like, I have a godson that gave back seven years. Mm -hmm. Became a whole lawyer in prison. A whole lawyer. He gave yeah. back time. That's unheard of. Like seven, you know, within that time, he's done Ifa. He had another baby. Like, look at all that you can accomplish. 
in all that time and, and just hearing you talk about how much time is wasted in there. Yeah. And it makes yeah. you wonder, like, is it it's because of a lack of motivation? Not because people don't want to do better, but most of them probably are like, I'm here. Yeah, some people don't have that push inside and out. Yeah. You know, so they're just used to what they're used to. You know, a lot of people don't want to think outside what they're used to. Yeah. You know, they might be afraid. I think they're more so afraid, though. Yeah, you're afraid to fail. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, to go through the whole appellate process to study probably what you studied or like what my godson studied, and then to stand in front of that board and be like denied. It yeah. takes a lot of fortitude. Yeah. You know, denial and rejection takes a lot of fortitude, whether it's with a partner, whether it's with the law, you know, especially when things are kind of, it seems, you know, constructed in a way where you're meant to fail, you're meant to lose. You know, it's, yeah. it's the conviction rate and the denial rate is so high. And they try to scare you with the conviction rate. When yeah. You could really possibly beat it. Yeah. You know, get it dismissed or whatever. Yeah. But they hear that and get frightened. Yeah. Now, I know, and obviously nothing if you don't want to touch on it. Any, any, uh, maybe funny, if anything, or any interesting jail stories? Everybody's got a story. Nah, uh, not really. I was chilling. I was yeah. by myself. Yeah. You know, I seen stuff that was sure. funny. You yeah. know what I'm saying? A lot of nonsense. Yeah, I was like, it's stupid. <laughs> y'all grown. Y'all, y'all yeah. older than me. I'm like 22. Yeah. Y'all 30, 40 years old doing this. You know what I'm saying? How old are you? I'm 27 now. 27. I just turned 27 last week. You might go through a lot what I go through. I've I've had situations where people have walked into the Waldani guy, like, the reading's already paid for, everything's already coordinated. And I've had lit- people literally look at me and be like, uh, I'm here for the Bawalao. I'm like, I'm right here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're yeah. like, you're the Bawalao? I'm like, yeah, I'm the Bawalao. He's like, is there another Bawalao? I'm like, no, it's just me. <laughs> and they'll literally look at me and be like, all right, bye. And, like, I've walked out on the consult completely. Yeah, that's crazy. So I, I don't know. Do you go through things like that being a young Baolao, not only in initiation age, but, you know, being under 30? I go through it by being young and black. Really? They're questioning it. You know, they're already they questioning the, the age, and they're questioning me being English. Yeah. You know? Because, like I said, they look at Isheshe, the Afri- you know, African people. Yeah. And they look at Criollo straight, Cuban people, only Spanish. see you with the green and yellow you know, on, yeah. Yeah, you know. And then when they see me, they're like, it's surprising. But, you know, after I do all so day, and, you know, we get the business done, then yeah. they're like, oh, wow, you're not who I thought you was. Yeah. Or oh, I might go back and read an old dude that it came out or, you know, something that failed. And Ovud is like, the person was testing you or coming to see if you was really truly who you say you are. Yeah, there's a couple I, of those, yeah. You know, I surprise them every time, especially more like older people. Yeah. 40, 50 years old come. Yeah. That's a huge that's a huge compliment, man. When you have that older demographic, especially people who are initiated, yeah. that entrust themselves in you. I remember one time I got a wisdom tooth pulled by a guy that was was your age at the time. I was like eighteen. Yeah. And even me being eighteen, I was a little shook. I'm like, yo, this guy's putting a knife to my face. And uh he did a wonderful job. So I, I think it's just a reminder that it's not about age, it's about the intensity and time that you invest, mm-hmm. you know? Um, how do you stay motivated to study now, even though you're at the beginning stages, you know, cause everybody hits that plateau. Like everybody wants to eat the book the first six to eight months, right? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, you know, yeah. and then, and then it, you hit that wall and you're like, Oh, now I got to learn that bowl. Oh, now I got to learn the, the hand of Ifa. You know, how do you stay motivated? What's your plan of action? At first I was like that. Um, study every day. Then I'm like, Oh man, it's a yeah. lot. Now. No, I just get a, uh, 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 how do I say, like, I just strive to want to do Ifa, 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 Ifa. I stop anything and everything that I'm doing to do Ifa. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I just get a rush from it. I love it so much. It's kind of weird. I say it to myself sometimes, like, it's weird. I never had a rush for nothing else like this. I don't know. Well, when you're, I mean, I was the same way, brother. I was probably the worst employee that anyone's ever met. <laughs> like, I was the kind of guy, like, I'd get a job for, like, two weeks, get the first check, and I'd quit. Yeah. And then I'd find another job before the paycheck was, like, you know, before I yopped it, before it was completely gone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I remember thinking, like, you know, I'm getting a little older. I'd like to have a wife. You know what I'm saying? I'd like to have a family. And, you know, this isn't going to work forever. You know, yeah. I can't live with mom forever. So, you know, I started really thinking, like, what am I going to be able to do every day that I'm not going to get bored with. And not only that, I'm going to actually try and be good at it. And it kept going back to Ifa, Ifa, Ifa. I remember I spoke to my grandmother about it. And she started crying. Because she was from Hialeah. She saw these yeah. gentlemen. And, you know, the, the, our brother Bawalao was back in the 80s. The Scarface era. Not everybody yeah. was, you know, 
you know, washing their hands. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, everybody yeah. was moving clean. So she was terrified because the idea of a Babalao to her was somebody that, you know, this is getting locked up or something. You know, our fraternity went through a dark, a dark age. Um, but, you know, I explained it to her. And, you know, she was just very supportive. And I remember when I actually took that step with their support and my wife's support, ultimately, um, I'm like, I could do this, you know, and every day. And actually be able to provide for my family and create a stable home without this just being a hobby, you know. So, um, Blake, what's next for you? I don't know, man. It's in the whole hands. Yeah. Yeah, it's in the five hands. What would you say to you... Back then, you know, what would you say to the young man who now is, you know, at that crossroads of life? You know, I don't know what I want to do with myself. I don't know who I'm meant to be, um, whether it be yourself or somebody similar. You know, what, what words would you say to them? Get into religion, you know, find what's for you. Um, you don't got to be like everyone else. You know, you don't got to be like your peers. Be yourself. But find religion. You know what I'm saying? Find something that's gonna keep you strong. You know, don't want to let you break or nothing like that. You know, you gotta just be strong and find yourself. That's what I say. That's beautiful, brother. And I I agree with you because I think the day a man finds a higher power, whatever it may be, you hold yourself accountable. Sure. You start thinking a little bit more. You start pondering how could this affect, you know, a community at large, a people at large. And I think once we as men get to that point, I think we can really affect things positively. And I think that effect has, you know, is and will shine through you. Sure. And people that look like you, people that look like us, and people that are looking for something, you know. Right. So how can people get in contact with you, Bobby? Uh, on Instagram, um, at Baba Ifache, B-A-B-A-I-F-A-C-H-E. Beautiful. Yeah. Any closing words for our community? Um subscribe <laughs> thank you thank you that, i think that's the first person to ever say that right phil <laughs> yeah like, that's wild follow oh. me on instagram follow him on instagram yo man through that chair's yeah. words reach heaven dog yeah man, please give us a subscription my brother thank you so much yeah. for the opportunity thank, thank you for coming from so far Check and i wish that orumila and Oshosi and all that walks yeah. with you looks upon you with open eyes, bright eyes. May Olu Dumari bless you always in your practice. And sure. may those that arrive at your doorstep know that they're in good hands That's as sure. you continue to refine and polish yourself as another brother. Thank you so much for being the positive part of our fraternity. Sure. Well, I, I hate to do this to you, but now the most exciting part of the interview, every interview, is our elevator music and our shout-outs. So you're going to put on those headphones. That's okay. right, everybody. Thank Bill, you for watching. Tell somebody to subscribe. Thank God. Are you, <laughs> are you stuck on the... Uh, I think so, Papo. Well, you don't need to put them on. You can still hear no it. headphones? Let me just... Uh, I'll, I'll hear from afar. All right. All right. So here we go. Talk to you. Welcome. All right, folks. Thank you all for tuning in. That was actually a very, very positive episode. So props to you, Blake. Okay. If you guys want more, more Joseph Baba Ifa, right under this video, there's a join button. You can join our membership program. We have three separate tiers for you. That's extra shows, extra content, discounts on merchandise, and even more. So let's show some love to the people that show love for you, Joseph. We got Thank the you. VIPs. VIPs. All right, we're only doing three this time. We got... Raul, Raul Colon, oh, gracias. Diane Nelson, Diane, thank and Jartu you. Thelwell. Thank you so All much. Right? So let's show some love to our super fans, okay? Oh, yeah. We got um, Hemp Lord again. Oh, that's my favorite one. That's All my right? guy. Or my girl. <laughs> I, I wonder, don't know who it is. I wonder what they do. That's anyway. a great name. <laughs> we got Shannon Torres. Thank you, Shannon. And James Gatabaki. Thank you, James. So that's it for this week. Guys, a couple of closing uh, notes. Be sure to check out Blake, or as he said, please subscribe, like, share, comment. BotaniGotCandlesAndMore.com is up and running. The podcast is on all major platforms. You know, thank you from all of us here. And until next time, see the light. <laughs> <laughs>